All right, guys, today we're going to talk about the top five mistakes that a lot of you are most likely making with your digital platform, especially your modelers. Let's get started. So as you know, Line 6 just released update 3.50 for the Helix, and I've been doing a lot of videos about the Helix, and while I was doing these videos, it kind of reminded me of what, um, you know, what I went through when I first started using the digital platforms and some of the pitfalls that I fell into, and uh, I figured, you know what, maybe I need to do a video about this, because like I said, all those memories came rushing back into my head, and I was kind of laughing, going... <laughs> Yeah, I remember doing a lot of dumb stuff when I uh, first started uh, delving into the digital platform world. So just so you know, I was guilty of falling into some of these traps myself when I first got started with the digital platforms. So I'm doing this so that you don't make the same mistakes that I made or the same mistakes that a lot of other people are still making to this day with their digital platform. It doesn't matter if it's a Helix or a Quad Cortex or a Kemper or whatever. I mean, people are still making a lot of these same mistakes. So let's Let's get started with mistake number one. Mistake number one, stop tweaking. For the love of God, stop tweaking. Oh my God, I've seen so many people that just, all they do is turn knobs and play a few riffs on their guitar, and they just can't stop. They spend more time turning knobs on their digital platform than they do actually playing through it or practicing or writing or rehearsing or working on that one riff that they can't play right you know they spend more time treating their digital platform like a game like a video game than it is something to play their guitar through and it's kind of pathetic i mean they're they're trying to tweak their parameters of their amp or their effects or choosing different irs and tweaking those and moving mics around and it's just crazy i know the possibilities are kind of endless with these platforms but it doesn't mean that you should sit there and tweak all day and not accomplish anything and the thing is by the end of a long tweaking session your ears are so fatigued that they're now playing tricks on you so all the stuff that you're making adjustments on your ears are too fatigued to even understand what's going on you can't hear high end anymore so you keep cranking up more high end uh, you can't hear certain things the way that you were hearing them you know hours earlier so you keep adjusting to make up for that and your tired ears are definitely playing tricks on you and then you get up the next day and you listen to what you ended up with the day before and it sounds like absolute crap and then you gotta start all over again. Every day you're caught in this vicious cycle and you know what they say about insanity. <laughs> I mean, a lot of you are caught in that horrible insanity circle, you know, where you're just not getting anything accomplished. And you're really not accomplishing anything by going chug, chug, turn it up. Did you hear that? That was weird. Okay, my ears are playing tricks on me now. Anyways, I mean, if you stay on this path, you know, the road to nowhere with the constant tweaking, all you're doing is accomplishing nothing. You know, I mean, you're always going to be frustrated with whatever digital platform that you're playing through, and you're going to think it sucks. And, you know, you're not really doing anything. You know, you're not getting better on guitar. You're not uh, writing any cool riffs. You're not getting faster on your solos or anything like that. I mean, <laughs> all you're doing is chug, chug, turn a knob. That's all you're freaking doing. And at the end of this whole cycle, maybe the only song you've ever written is chug, chug, turn a knob. What the hell's going on here? You guys hearing what I'm hearing? Chug, chug, turn a knob, chug, chug, turn a knob, chug, chug, turn a knob, chug, chug, core riff, chug, chug, turn a knob, chug, chug, turn a knob, chug, chug, turn a knob, chug, chug, core riff, chug, chug, turn a knob, chug, chug, turn a knob, chug, chug, turn a knob, chug, chug, core riff, chug, chug, turn a knob, chug, chug, turn a knob, chug, chug, turn a knob, chug, chug, Well, 
I guess that sums that up. <laughs> well, I guess the moral of the story is just dial something in. If you know it's good, leave it alone and move on. Just play your guitar and get better at your craft because after all, that's really what it's all about, right? All right, mistake number two, and this is a big one with me. Stop playing your digital platform through cheap, crappy speakers. And you all know the ones that I'm talking about, don't you? The freaking head rush. Oh my God, I'm telling you, I hate those things. They sound like pure ass. I swear, every time somebody plays through one of those, a serial killer is born. I can't stand those nasally, horrible speakers. And here's the thing, there's a difference between just practicing through something because you just got to use it and it's convenient and inexpensive and all that kind of stuff, but a lot of you guys end up dialing in your tones through these horrible speakers. And then when you plug into like a real system, like when you get on stage or you know you get into a studio, the studio engineer and the, and the live sound engineer is looking at you all sideways because you sound like ass, you know? I mean, your, your, your sound is just terrible. And they're like, man, well, that thing sounds like crap. It's because you dialed it in through a crappy speaker such as the Head Rush, which is my favorite one to bash on because I think it's garbage. And the thing is, is you're not dialing in your tones. You're really dialing in that speaker and you're dialing in your tones to sound good through a horrible sounding speaker. And when you take those same tones that are dialed in horribly and put them through a real system with good speakers, they're gonna sound like crap, they just are. So what I would suggest for you is get a good pair of studio monitors. Now the Cali audio monitors, in my opinion, are the best bang for the buck for you. They sound great. I have two pair of them. I have a pair upstairs in my living room and I have a pair right here in my studio and they sound fantastic. I love them and they're very affordable. So look those up, Cali Audio, K-A-L-I Audio Studio Monitors, and they're very affordable and they sound great. Even Glenn Fricker likes them, so what does that tell you? And when you play through a good pair of studio monitors like the Cali Audio ones, not only are you literally saving money by having a good affordable monitor, but you're getting that really nice stereo separation. So when you use your stereo effects like delays and choruses and stuff like that, you're actually gonna hear the separation as opposed to playing through a speaker, you know, a single speaker on the floor. And they're at ear level as you're seated. So the sound is coming right at your ears. It's not bouncing off the floor coming at you from, you know, from, you know, three feet down or four feet down or whatever. And, you know, just getting all diluted by the time it hits your ears. So you want to listen to things at ear level so that there's no way that you can misinterpret what's coming out of that speaker. It's hitting you right in the ears, you know, and that's really what you want. So not only do you get the stereo separation, but you're also getting a more true, reliable sound out of these speakers so that when you dial in your tones on these speakers, because again, there's flat studio monitors, you can trust that your tone is good. If it sounds good through these speakers, it's gonna sound good through pretty much everything that you play through when you're out on the road or when you go to other studios. And trust me, if the tone that you're dialing in on your digital platform does not sound good through a good pair of studio monitors, it's not the fault of the monitors, it's your tone. You need to fix what's going on in your modeler, not the speakers. So you see what I'm saying here? Instead of dialing in your speakers, you're dialing in your digital platform. So always use a good pair of studio monitors and you can always trust what's coming out of them. They're gonna tell you the truth as to what's going on in your preset that you're dialing in. Mistake number three, stop overcomplicating your presets. I see a lot of guys with all these weird routing configurations and, oh, I can click this and drag this here and split this and put a Y splitter here and send this down to there and, you know, route this this way. And it's just like, dude, what are you accomplishing with this? I mean, it's like you're building a, a freaking corn maze in your freaking modeler. I mean, and none of it makes anything sound better. I mean, look, I get sometimes we need to have a little bit of complexity to our presets because we have a complex setup and we're just trying to do something that uh, helps our workflow. But you don't have to overthink it and get too complex with it just because the unit allows you to do so and makes it easy for you to do so. I mean, yeah, the Helix is one of the easiest platforms to dial in and it's very user friendly, but that doesn't give you a license to make things complicated just because it allows you to do so. I mean, at the end of the day, you gotta ask yourself something. Does this make my preset sound and feel better or not? If it doesn't, then don't do it. There's a lot of people online, especially on Facebook and some of these groups or on YouTube that are doing all of these tutorials on how to dial in like all these weird over complex presets. And 
literally what these guys are doing is they're just saying, hey, look how smart I am. Look what I can do, you know? I mean, <laughs> it's just stupid, you know? And they're just, they are just love the sound of their own voice and they want everybody to think that they're intelligent. And really, at the end of the day, it's very easy to make things complicated, but it's very difficult to make things simple. So I have a lot more respect for people that can dial things in in a very simple, straightforward way because at the end of the day, isn't that what we all really want? Just something simple to use that sounds great. Okay, mistake number four, and this is another big one with me. Don't listen to bro science online about your digital platform. You see these guys with all these hidden secrets and tips and tricks videos, and they're showing you how to do all this dumb shit that doesn't really do anything, except for make your preset sound even worse. And they're just doing this because they want you to think that they're smart. And they're just trying to get a following and a bunch of clicks. I mean, they'll take a certain pedal and put it somewhere in the chain where it's not supposed to go and tell you like it does something really cool there and you should try this and it's you know something out of the ordinary but hey look what it does and it does this really cool thing and really it doesn't do anything cool it just does something really stupid and they try to spin it in a way where it sounds like it's doing something really cool and they'll split things up and put things in weird orders and you know tell you that this is like a cool little secret and try to sell you on like yeah follow me follow my channel for more stuff it's almost like those those goofy memes you see on Facebook like follow me for more recipes and it's something really dumb I mean it's that kind of stuff and I call it bro science where these guys are just doing stuff that the product was never designed to do and I'm sure the people that are making these products are cringing when they're watching these videos going dude we we never designed this to do that and you're you know you're telling people to you know take a submarine on a freeway and saying well the propeller still moves it down the road <laughs> i mean maybe it would maybe it wouldn't but it's not designed for that and it's really the equivalent of that dumb you know what some of these guys do now i could spend all day on this but here's a couple of examples of some of the things that i've literally seen people advise you to do with the helix for instance hey guys welcome to my bro science channel so today i'm going to give you some really nice out of the box tips on how i dial in my helix presets first let me get a sip of my coffee oh that's good yeah lots of flavor very complex kind of like my presets yeah so let's get this done huh my mom's upstairs making dinner i'm 40. Anyway, let's dive in, shall we? Let's start with tip number one. All right, so let's start out with uh, with our amp, huh? So basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just delete the whole EQ on the amp. So let's go ahead and uh, take all the EQ out of there. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna add our own EQ. Yeah, you know what? Let's go with a 10 band. So we're gonna go ahead and add some highs. Yeah, let's go ahead and add some highs and brighten that amp right up. And we'll scoop out some mids and let's add a little low end. There you go, there's our EQ. Okay, so now it's time for tip number two. So what I do with my overdrive pedal is unlike most people, I don't put it in front of the amp like a lot of people do. I put it in between the amp and the speaker. Yeah, because I want to drive that speaker. Yeah, I'm going to drive it hard with the overdrive. That's what it's for. You know, like I said, don't waste your time putting it in front of the amp. Put it in front of the speaker, between the amp and the cab. Yeah, it gives you a nice volume boost, and it really drives the speaker. Because in the real world, you want to drive your speakers hard. Well, with the overdrive, you can do that. All right, so tip number three. I like to put a compressor at the end of my chain and use it as a mastering tool. Just like in a studio mix. You put a compressor in the mastering tool on your studio mix, why wouldn't you put it on your guitar tone? So that's what I do. Don't forget to subscribe. Remember, bro science, because we're all about what's real. See you next time. All right, so some easy red flags to look out for. Guys that are 40 who still live at home with their moms and guys who do bro science videos on digital platforms. Avoid them like the plague. So in the spirit of me telling you what not to do and telling you what mistakes to avoid with your digital platform, here's a quick video on how I dial in presets and how I keep it really simple. And I think you're gonna like this, especially if you're new to digital platforms. All right, so this is what a normal preset should look like. Okay, you have your amp, 
you have your cab, you have your effects in the effects loop here, which are between the amp and the cab, and then you have all the effects that you want in front of your amp in front of your amp, just like you would set up a normal pedal board and amplifier in the real world. So there's nothing weird here. There's no weird routing that I've done or splitting or things like that. It's just normal looking. And because I have it set up in a normal fashion, it's going to sound as good as it can inside the realm of the Helix or any other product that you're using that's digital. So look at the settings on the amplifier. Very normal settings. I didn't do anything weird with it. It all looks really normal. Okay, here are my settings on the chorus. Very normal settings. The only thing I did that might be a little bit, you know, different is I slowed the rate down because I don't want it too wobbly. You know, I want it to be a nice modulation that doesn't sound too shaky. I hate shaky modulations. They just sound weird, especially with high gain tones. And then you have the script phase. I didn't even touch the parameters on this. I just left them the way they are because it's fine. And then, of course, the noise gate. I just... Uh, changed the threshold a little bit on it and that was it and then here's my overdrive pedal put a little bit of gain in there and that's you know what you do in the digital pedals you want to add a little bit of gain in the digital overdrive pedals because it definitely helps out a little bit I only put a little bit in and it helps okay and uh, crank the level and that's pretty much what I did you know I mean it's very very simple and then here in the delay my time for you know, solos is 850, and for rhythms, it's uh, about 600. And I have it set up for solos. I have the mix kind of low because I'm playing it by myself. I'm not playing it in a mix, but if I had it in a mix, I'd probably bring the, uh, the mix up a little bit more too. So, and then reverb, you know, there's my settings there. And I'm gonna show you how all this stuff sounds now. So let's just hear how the amp sounds with the overdrive pedal right now. <laughs> Sounds normal, sounds good. And again, it's because I didn't do anything weird with my settings or how I routed everything. So let's listen to each effect one by one. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna turn the overdrive on and off while I'm playing for you so you can hear how that sounds. Sounds very natural, just added some aggression and some attack to the amplifier just like I want it to. So let's just go through all the rest of these effects one by one now. Here's the chorus. Here's a delay. There's a reverb. So I have this reverb set up for solos. This is one of my favorite reverbs in the Helix. And basically I just uh, have it set up to work with the delay. I look at delay like uh, all the repeats that are coming from the delay are like skipping stones and all your notes are skipping across the pond, which is reverb. And it swallows up this, the, you know, all the repeats really nicely and it just gives them a nice you know, body of water for them to all kind of fall into and melt away very subtly. Now you don't always have to use reverb on your solos, but if you're going to use reverb, always put it after the delay, again, so that it allows all of those repeats to kind of fall into that huge body of water that the reverb is supplying for you. 
Now, you could use a reverb like this for rhythms, but only like on the big ending of a song. Like if you want to come out of a song with a big power chord and you want that to kind of melt away and fill the room, that would be kind of cool as well. Very dramatic ending. So that's kind of nice as well. I'll demonstrate that for you now. <laughs> Yeah, it just kind of lets that song or that ending of the song kind of melt away and, and keeps the space to not be so awkward, you know. Just makes it a little more epic. So now let's leave the delay and reverb on and we'll go ahead and check out the script mod as well. <laughs> All right, so there you go. I mean, this would all sound really good in a mix. I mean, I could go on stage with this right now. Now, bear in mind, I only spent probably less than 10 minutes setting up this whole preset. And because of that, I would probably have to make some minor fine tuning adjustments to my effects and stuff like that regarding the levels. But other than that, everything sounds really freaking good. So like I was saying earlier, just keep everything simple. Just do it simple. Don't listen to these guys that are going online and going on YouTube and showing you all these weird ways of dialing everything in. They're just a bunch of snake oil salesmen that just want you to think they're so smart and they're so brilliant because they can do all this weird stuff with their Helix and they're showing you all this cool stuff. None of it's cool. It's all really stupid. You don't need to be doing this stuff. Like the old saying goes, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Now bear in mind, there are some exceptions to what I'm saying here. Okay, so sometimes you do have to step outside of the normal way of doing things to accommodate your setup. But that should be the exception, not the norm. This is the norm. This is how you should always start out dialing in your presets on any digital platform. Keep it straight, keep it simple, and keep it normal. And it'll sound more real when you do it that way. And then after that, if you have to make some minor changes with your routing and maybe some other parameters, do it, but do it minimally. I hope this helps. Well, I hope you got something out of that short little dial-in clip there. All right, so the fifth and final mistake that I see a lot of guys making, even to this day, and I'm guilty of making this mistake myself, uh, especially when I was getting started with my Helix, is buying presets from liars and shady people. Now I'll give you a quick story. When I first started uh, dialing in my Helix, I got frustrated because I was like, man, I just, I wish it could just sound a little bit more like the 5150 amp that I'm used to. Cause I had one for years and I just couldn't get it to do that. And I was really frustrated. So I went online and there was a guy selling presets for the uh, 5150 sound. So I paid $24.99 for the preset and I downloaded it and put it in my Helix and I played it through the same exact studio monitors that I was watching his video on and it didn't sound anything like it did in his video so I reached out to the guy and I'm like hey why doesn't this sound the same way it did in your video I just doesn't sound right to me at all and his response to me was pretty shocking he's like well pickups vary so maybe it's your guitar <laughs> and I'm like yeah it's my $3,300 guitar that makes your preset sound like crap okay yeah duly noted the guy was just a complete con artist and a lot of these guys what they do is they'll show you like this is what the real amp sounds like and this is what my preset sounds like and it sounds exactly the same bullshit it doesn't what these guys do is they just use the same amp sound and pretend they're playing the preset and they're lying to you and once they got your money no refunds no nothing you're on your own so make sure that before you buy a preset from somebody you do some research on them and find out if you can really trust these people because there's a lot of good people out there that make presets but there's also a lot of people that really make crappy presets and charge you for them and it's really a shame it really is i've even seen people make presets that they're like oh yeah there's 10 presets in this in this uh pack you know for 20 bucks or whatever and they what they do is they just <laughs> <laughs> this is really pathetic. So you buy it and you load it in your Helix and each preset has a little more gain, you know? So you're like, oh, so you got low gain, little more gain, medium, medium high, all the way up to high gain. And the only thing that guy did was change how much gain each preset had in it. 
Like, really? That's what you're charging me for? That you turn the gain up a little bit per preset and you're charging me for 10 presets where they're all the same except for the gain is a little bit different in each one. Give me a freaking break. What a freaking joke. So you got to be careful. There's some people out there who even sell presets that, of amplifiers that aren't even in the Helix. There's a guy selling a preset of a Kraken for the Helix. And I'm like, dude, Line 6 never modeled a Victory Kraken for the Helix. What are you doing selling a Victory Kraken preset for the Helix? They haven't modeled that amp yet. What the hell? And I'm just telling you, it's stuff like that. So just keep your eyes open for red flags in that department and avoid buying presets from some of these scam artists. Because again, once they got your money, they're never going to refund it, and they're always going to give you a litany of excuses as to why it's your fault that the preset sounds like crap. Again, there's a lot of good guys out there selling presets. Just make sure you do your due diligence. All right, guys, well, that sums it up for today's video. I hope you got something out of it. So if you have any horror stories or some funny stories about some pitfalls that you fell into on your journey with your digital platform, feel free to share the comment below. I think it would be fun for all of us to have a good laugh about it or to learn from it. Well, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And thanks to all my subscribers and Patreon supporters. I really appreciate you guys. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and make sure you click the bell so that you can be notified every time I either go live or come out with new episodes. Well, I got a lot more stuff coming up for you guys. I'll see you on the next one.